Hello, welcome to part four of the baseline sound design tutorial videos that I'm making. Um, my name is Tom Cosm, and uh, we're, we have been making very standard baselines. Um, and I say standard um, in a positive way because I say standard because people like them, um, so therefore they are standard and they're good, that's why people like them. Um, today we're going to focus on a uh, full-on psychedelic trance bass line. Um, it's, uh, you'll hear this a lot in, in lots of full-on music. I'm talking bouncy, funky kind of full-on stuff, not this real dark 150 plus evil shit that you hear. Um, we might do a bass line tutorial on those a little bit later, but today it's going to be fun, bouncy, dooka dooka, that kind of stuff. Um, in this Ableton project file here, which I'll make available for download, um, I've just got a kick, snare and hi-hats here. These are just, just little um, rhythmical things just so we can, once we start getting into the um, design of it, we can um, have something to listen to it along with. Very, very, very simple. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to insert a MIDI track, Command Shift T, and we're going to rename this to Baseline. And, um, whoops, Baseline. And uh, as usual, I'm going to open up an operator, and I'm going to use an operator for this one. Now, first thing I want to do here is I'm going to insert a MIDI clip, and it's going to be one bar long, Command Shift M for MIDI clip. Just selected the area that I wanted, Command Shift M. Let's open this up, and let's just put in some notes. Okay, so let's uh, let's go with G. G's nice and standard. So let's put in a note, sixteenth notes. I'm just going to put them across like this. One, two, three, four, five. Like so. I'm going to solo this track. Let's just have a listen. Very boring at the moment. <clears throat> so if we go into an operator, you see we've only got one uh, oscillator or operator working because it's got the level to zero decibels. The other ones are on negative infinity, so they're not playing anything. Um, we can actually turn those off if we like to save some power, CPU power. So we've just got a sine wave. Now, the standard bass line, from what I hear, and I think I'm safe to say, they use a saw wave. Now, you can use a square wave uh, if you want. It creates a different kind of feeling. Um, we'll change it to a uh, square wave a bit later just to see what it sounds like. But for now, we're going to use a saw wave. So I'm just going to pick a nice standard saw. And of course it's sounding really really bad at the moment because we haven't got any kind of expression or envelopes or automation on the um, on, on the actual sound. So first thing we can do is if we go over to this filter section, we can turn the filter on, make sure it's a low pass filter, and let's just move the frequency around so we can hear how that affects um, how it works. So nothing amazing as of yet, um, it's still sounding very very continuous, a very continuous note. Um, what we can do here is we can put in an envelope into the filter, that's to say this area over here, once we have the filter selected, this area over here we have this envelope section, and this line or envelope, um, we can attach it to this frequency cutoff point, and uh, that will mean that the filter will play a kind of a sharp sweep every time a note's played. Now we, um, we do that by bringing up the envelope amount here down here, at the moment nothing's happening. If we bring the envelope amount up, all the way to the top, you can hear that that uh, envelope is affecting the frequency, um, so it's opening up very, very, very high. You see this peak value here, if I drag it up and down, you can also drag it up and down here, it's at 100%. So that filter is completely open, and then this curve line here, it quickly snaps down over this time period, which is 600 milliseconds. So if we were to bring this, uh, this decay value back, or you can click and drag on this little dot, um, you'll hear it get shorter and shorter. Like so. Now the other thing we want to do is we want to bring this frequency down, um, we want to bring it right down so when this gets to the bottom, uh, when the sustain amount, it, it goes down to uh, uh, a very, 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 very cut off um, low passed sound. So let's just bring this fr uh, frequency down. Very good, and let's bring this decay back a bit. Now for me, this kind of bass line, it's very sharp, it's very attacky. It's all about making um, a few elements dance together, specifically the decay time of the envelope, the frequency, and the resonance. And it's a it's a perfect mix of, of these guys here. So, um, oh, and the other thing to note is if we look over here on this line, you'll actually see we have a blue dot. Now this means we can drag the curve up or down. Um, and it may not seem like it makes that much of a difference when we're working with such short notes, but um, I think you'd be surprised that the curve really, really does help. If I have it completely slant, straight down. Let's bring the, uh, 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 the decay time back a bit. That's it straight down, and if we bring this dot down, you 
you can hear what's happening is it's uh, it's it's cutting off faster and then slowing down a bit and that's on each note it's happening really really fast but I, I think it makes a difference curves are very nice things to start getting into your um your um uh, modulation and expression so let's just bring this decay a little bit up more I'm just trying to find the right balance here that's sounding very good the only issue is you can hear that the sub of that note it's just pretty much continuously going because if we go over into our MIDI clip you see I've made all these notes um, very very long and the, they stop right as the next one starts and that's why we're getting that continuous note so let's just select all of those by command A or control A and let's just click and drag them all back a notch like that so they're all a little bit shorter that's much more uh, um, uh, definitive if I drag them out that's really short I like it there of course if you hold down the command key while you're dragging you can actually um, make it so it doesn't snap to the grid but I like it where it is snapped to the grid at the moment so let's keep it there Very good. Now the other thing we um, we need to think about is this resonance part over here. Now just a quick refresh if you're um, wondering what the resonance actually does. I'm just going to load an auto filter after here just so we have a visual representation of what it does. Um, so this is a filter much like this filter here. We've just got a standard filter, low pass filter, and this is our frequency here. So if we bring this down, all the frequencies in this part are going to come through. All the frequencies outside are, are going to be cut. Um, and so this is your volume and this is your frequencies from the very low to very high. Um, so so that's the um, that's the cutoff point. Now the filter or the Q as they call it on here, it can be called either or in your synth um, filter, uh, sorry resonance or Q. Um, if we bring this up, what you'll actually see is it's boosting that point where the cutoff is. It's giving it a little bit of a volume boost, and what that does is it really emphasizes where that cutoff point is. Now you can bring this up really high. You can have it really really flat. The more you the more high you have your resonance or EQ, the more exciting it's going to be, but you can overdo it. Um, I'll just get rid of that filter and I'll just bring up this frequency for you so you can have a listen. So you can hear now we're really boosting that um, frequency point and it actually boosts it so hard that the actual, um, the actual resonance sweep um, almost takes over the fundamental tone, the original tone. Um, if I drag this decay time down really long, and if I bring the volume right down, uh, the tempo right down to 20, we'll be able to hear that. So that's what's happening, that's that resonance really screaming through, so we don't want, that, want it that much. So let's just bring this decay back down to a short value, let's bring this uh, tempo back up to 145 BPM. And let's bring the decay time down a bit more. And bring this resonance down a bit more. It's just about finding that balance. Very good. Now let's just have a listen to it with uh, the kick that we had before. Now the first thing you'll notice is that the kick and the bass line, they're conflicting with each other. This is because the bass is playing a note when the kick is playing and they're both very low notes so they're kind of muffling each other you're getting into phase cancellation and, and muddiness which is something you don't want obviously the easiest way to get rid of that would be to open up the MIDI clip and let's delete the first note from every beat so when the kick plays there's no note that's sounding really really good the other way we can do this, I'm just uh, command Z uh, undoing that to go back, is we can load in a compressor and we can sidechain it. Now just a w quick recap, sidechaining means taking an input from somewhere else and having it affect um, uh, your effect. Um, <laughs> ooh, I used two effects in one sentence. Um, if you click on sidechain, if we click on this arrow, we open up the sidechaining area, we can say where do you want the audio to come from? We want it to come from the kick. And now we can bring the threshold down so every time that kick hits, everything in this channel is going to get compressed. So let's have a listen. And I'll just bring the threshold down as I play this so you can hear how it affects it. Bring the attack down a wee bit. And then the release down a wee bit. So it's effectively ducking the bass line out of the way of the kick each time the kick is playing. Very handy. Now, one other thing I'm going to do here, this is a trick I've done in quite a few of my videos. Um, I think it works really well over a uh, kind of uh, full-on bass line like this. Now, again, this is my trick. This is, oops, this is how I like to do things. Um, you'll, I'm sure you've got your own little ways of doing this. But I like to use a filter delay 
of course, remembering a filter delay is a delay which has three chains in it, three separate delays here, one, two, three, and you can assign them to go at different times, and you can go them to go from the left ear, the right ear, and all this kind of stuff. So if I just solo this and have a listen, this is what it sounds like at the moment. So very, very, very kind of muddy and crazy. We're kind of delaying it three times. And these delays are being synced to the BPM at the moment. You can see this one's on 3 16th notes. This is 1 16th note. And this is um, 5 16th notes. So uh, if we just turn the left one on. And so we don't want to do this with um, this filter delay. What we're going to do is we're going to turn the middle one off because we don't need it. So we've only got one on the left ear and one on the right ear. If we click on sync, we turn it into time mode. We'll do this for both of them. Time mode meaning that we are defining now the time between the delays in milliseconds or seconds uh, rather than actually um, attaching them to the beat. The reason we do this is because we can get very, very short, short times. Um, this is good because this one's in the left ear, this one's in the right ear, and as we bring the time of the delay down um, and, and have them different in each ear, we get this amazing spatial effect. It's a really quick way of getting a really nice sounding, uh, widening sound, a very spatial effect. Um, something I like to use a lot and it's um, it's quite hit and miss but you usually get something really cool almost straight away so I'm just gonna play this for you and I'm gonna bring down the time of the left ear and have a listen you'll be able to hear if you're on headphones you'll be able to get a really good impact so you can see the time now on the left ear is uh, one millisecond time on the right is uh, 10 milliseconds let's bring this one down as well I'm holding down the command key so I can drag this in very small increments without it it goes up really quick and we're working in very small increments so hold down the command and I'm just going to drag this this right one down until I get a nice spatial mix I quite like that now if you want to you can play with these bandpass filters here these are actually cutting off the frequencies um, outside of this this band and so we can move these around to just give it a little bit more character That sounds good to me. Now, of course, by doing this, what we're doing is we're, we're kind of making the um, we're making the baseline double itself up to a degree, and that's not going to be a good idea because um, we're going to get some really muddy stuff happening in the sub. So the best way to get rid of this is what we need to do is we need to um, click on these two things. So I held down the shift key, so the uh, synthesizer and the filter delay. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose group. And this takes those two units and puts them into an audio, uh, an instrument rack for us. Remember, an instrument rack is kind of a, a, a virtual rack where you can build lots of synths and lots of effects up. Um, so this is good because now we have an operator in our chain number one, and we can call this high. So this is the high part of the baseline. Now we're gonna, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put in an EQ8 after the filter delay. Notice how I didn't include the compressor because we want the compressor to affect everything that we build in this rack. If we put, if I had included it, it would only apply to this first chain um, that we're working on. So I want this to be after the audio effect track. Now I've put this EQ8 in because we can turn this first pole into a high pass filter. This means it's going to cut all the sub end out of this, this base, which is what we want for now. So if I bring this thing up, you see all the frequencies in the bottom are going to get cut. If I bring it right up. And I reckon right about there, now we're free to create a new sub-chain in this instrument rack. So we can now create a new synth, which is going to take over for us. And the way we do that is we're going to go and we're going to grab an operator, drag it in underneath the high one. So this is now going to be our sub, so we'll rename this to sub. Command R or Control R there. And we have a new operator here. I'm just going to solo the sub one. You can solo each individual chain if you want to listen to them individually. So here's the sub. So you can hear we've got our nice sine wave again. Now what we want to do here is we want to give this a little bit of punch. Now, like before we did with the other one, we're going to use an envelope, but we're not going to use a filter envelope because we've got a sine wave. There's not really much to filter because it's a very, very... Um, very flat kind of sound. We're going to use a pitch envelope. Now it's just like the filter envelope except it affects the pitch of each note. So if I turn this on here and I drag the amount up, this line here is now going to alter the pitch of every single note. So first thing we'll do is bring the decay back down a bit. Can't really hear much going on at the moment. If we bring the peak up, that means that it's, this means that the note's going to start at plus whatever semitones um, we define here. So let's bring it up to I know, plus 36 semitones. So this note is now going to play three, it's going to start three octaves above, and then it's going to quickly go back down to the sustain, which is zero semitones, which is relative to the note, which is a G. So if we go in here and have a listen, 
you can hear that's quite intense, kind of sounding like a kick drum. Let's bring the decay shorter and shorter, and we're doing this just so there's a really quick punch at the start of that sub. Very good, now let's listen to them both together. That's all good, but one thing I know is it's too high. I think we've done everything in octave too high. So what we're gonna do is open up this MIDI clip. I'm gonna select or Command A or Control A, hold down the Shift key and push down. And that takes all the notes down one octave, meaning it's still the same note, it's just one octave down. Now let's have a listen to that. Much more fat. And you can hear that sub coming through good. And you can hear the highs coming in through good. And together we've got now let's have a listen with our, with our other stuff for now. Not bad, we're starting to get somewhere. <coughs> now, one thing I notice is it's, it's very, very computer sounding at the moment. We don't have any kind of groove or, or feeling to it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the groove pool, but we're going to do this in a really quick way to get just a very standard shuffle feeling. Um, you can go into your Ableton library and you can extract we get various grooves and drop them into your groove pool down here. What we're going to do is we're simply going to drag this MIDI clip. Because we've got a note on every 16th note, we can actually drag this MIDI clip into the groove pool. It creates a new groove for us, and then we can drag this groove back on top of the MIDI clip. So now this groove is, being, is, is affecting the way that the notes work in this MIDI clip. Nothing crazy is going to happen yet. But if we change the bass note, it's reading the bass note as 16th. If we change this to 16th triplets, what happens is it actually gives it a really quick shuffle feeling for us. So you can hear it with just 16th notes and triplets. Now we can use the timing knob now to actually um, say how much of this groove is going to get applied. If we have this at zero, we're back to our original sound. If we bring it up slowly, we'll find a sweet spot. Maybe 50 is perfect. And that's very good. One thing I want to do is I also want to apply this to the hi-hats because the hi-hats um, don't have any groove on them either. So I can just drag this groove to the hi-hats. And we can drag it to the snare and the kick as well. We don't really need to because the kick and the snare don't have any 16th notes which fall on what the groove um, uh, will do. Uh, it, it won't. It do, they don't have any notes which the groove will apply to, but we should drag them on just as, out of, um, for good measure anyway. So let's have a listen now with the groove. Let's bring the timing up and see how that affects it. Very good, so you can hear it's got a much more human feeling to it now, which is great. Um, now, I'm going to quickly go through this MIDI clip, and I'm actually going to start moving some notes around, so we've got a bit of a pattern going on. I'm going to be really standard, I'm just going to select the third note from each beat. So here's beat 1, here's beat 2, here's beat 3, here's beat 4. We're just going to select the third one from each beat, like so. Bring it up an octave, that'll just create a very, very generic, cheesy sounding... And let's, let's just bring a few notes up around here. That's sounding good at the moment. Um, now, another fun thing we can do here is we can play with these velocities. You notice we have these velocity sliders here for each note that we've got. Now, this velocity, it's usually related to volume, but we can actually, if we go into our operator, we can assign this velocity, which has 128 little units for us to work with, um, as far as sliding it up and down goes. We can actually go into the operator, go over to this area here, and we can say the velocity goes somewhere else. Now this is great because it means we can send the velocity to any of these things here and we can put it on say the filter frequency. Now this is fun because it means that we can now go through and change each one of these notes and each one of these notes, that filter frequency, remember the filter frequency, um, oops, I used the wrong operator, sorry I went to the sub one so we don't want that, just backtrack, turn that off, we actually wanted to change the high bass so let's go over here, turn the velocity on to the filter frequency drag the amount up, so this is how much, 100 is what we want. So now if we go in here, each one of these little poles will tell us when, what cutoff point that frequency um, has on the filter. Um, so let's, uh, let's just move these around. If we hold down the command key, we can click on a note and drag it around. I'm just going to do this uh, randomly. You can hear we can make them quite expressive. Let's bring that one down, that one up.
fun. And we can also, I mean, we've got a second option here, a connection B. So we can actually assign this to something else. Uh, what could be farm? Uh, panorama, so this is the pan. We can do this, even though we've got something which is doing spatial effects over here. This will still have some effect. So if I bring the amount up, this velocity is also going to affect um, the left and right balance of the notes. It's just very subtle, but it gives it a really nice groove to it. So that's going well. The next thing I want to do is um, let's just bring the kick and the snare in and the bass line. We'll keep the hi-hats out because they're quite busy and use lots of high frequencies. If we go over to this EQ8, we can start just boosting some frequencies and, and making, I don't know, subtracting, boosting. I like to boost. Um, it's a bit naughty, but I, that's just how I work. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to move these around to find some sweet spots. I usually like, like putting it up high a little bit here. Let's bring down this part here. We'll add in another pole and move this around. Now one little trick I like to do, I've mentioned this in a previous video, is I'm going to put in a pole here, number 6, we can drag this around. What I'm going to do is give it lots of cue, lots of resonance, so you see it's a very sharp point, give it maximum gain, and what we can do here is we can actually sweep this frequency around until we find a sweet spot. Now remember before when I was talking about the resonance in the filter, if it's up very very high it actually produces a note, it's because it's boosting that frequency so high you actually start hearing a note, which is overpowering. So we've done this at the moment so we can move this around to find a note which matches the, the bass line, which is G. So I'm just going to bring this around, I'm going to start up high, I'll bring it down and down and down until I can find it harmonically matching um, that the original um, bass line sound. So let's do that, I'll just turn this on. You can hear that really sharp point. Right there, now see I've just, just, just swept it down until I found something that works. You'll be able to use your ears to find that. See here is a little bit off. I bring it down. Very good, now we can actually get rid of this cue, so widen it up a bit and bring the gain down. So we know that, that even though we're boosting this a little bit, we know this is a really sweet spot. And to me that usually adds just a nice little bit of character to the, to the mix. Very good. Now, what I'm going to do finally here, I'm quite happy with how this is going, I'm going to consolidate this clip, so I'm going to command J it. What that does is it turns those four loops into one entire four bar loop for us. So if I can open this up now, see we've got all these notes, so what I can do is just, I'm just going to go through and add in a few, few longer notes just for fun. Um, let's get rid of that one and that one, let's make this one quite long. Let's um, make this one longer, we'll put it here. Again, this is just a preference, I just like to have some long notes, call them funk notes or whatever, something real groovy that we can play with. I might bring these notes down, all of them, select them all and bring just bring them down two semitones just so they go down one, that'll create a nice little fun feeling. And we'll just make that one a high one. And let's just take these ones up a few, like that, let's see what happens. This could be it. Whoops. And the last thing I want to do here is, I'm liking how this, this is sounding, I'm just going to go in, I'm going to go into this bass line uh, where we had that cutoff frequency here. Remember we're already um, automating it with the envelope, we're already automating it with the velocity. We can actually um, draw some automation lines in here on that long note just to make them really, really funky. So I'm just clicking on this frequency, you notice we've got an automation line there now. So that means I can zoom in, I can find one of these long notes, I can select the period it goes for and I can drag like this, this will give it a real kind of swooping filter cutoff. Remember how I like curves, so I'm just going to add in a very little pseudo kind of curve there. And we'll do one here on this long note as well. 
like so, so it's very cut off and it slowly opens up. And we'll do one here as well. Like so. Let's, um, let's make this node an octave higher, let's see how that sounds. I like that, and one other quick thing I'd do is because this is a high note here, and it starts on a low note, let's just start this one, um, let's just start the phrase with a high note as well. Could be fun. And we'll drag the velocity up so the filter's quite open on that one. And let's have this one so it goes down, like that. I'm just mucking around here for fun. Sounding good. Let's bring the hi-hats in. It's a really offensive hi-hat there. Let's just bring the decay down on that. Very funky. I'm, and just before, remember how we said we were going to see what it sounds like with a saw wave? Let's just do that. It could, it could uh, square wave. It could sound cool. Going into the high, then we'll just change our uh, waveform to a square. Very cool, and let's go back to the uh, saw wave though, I like that. Oh, just for fun, let's duplicate this. I know I go on a tangent sometimes. I'm just gonna duplicate this. Let's just call this synth. We'll get rid of the sub, because we don't need that. Go into the highs. Let's just make this all an octave up, twice. We'll use a saw wave, a uh, square wave for that one, that was quite fun. And let's put a ping pong delay on it, yeah. Let's give it, let's turn these, uh, turn these operators on, give it a bit of BFM. I'm very happy with how that is. Okay, so I'm going to save this live pack, I'm going to collect it all, and I'm going to upload it to the Pro Members section. Thank you very much, I hope you've enjoyed this, um, and uh, stay tuned for the next next one. Yeah, TomCosm.com. Cheers.